Nice. Nice. All right, we're back. Rigging bench. We got Kevin Gould in today. Psyched. Kevin's a uh, very fishy tuna guy. I see him down there, down south of the vineyard all the time. He had great success down there this year. I think he rated uh, his yellowfin season 10 out of 10 and his bluefin season down there 9 out of 10 this wow. year. So he had, a, he had a lot of fun, he said, down there. So he's talking about um, the season as it progressed, you know, starting in June or so. Some tactics when you get down there to look for, you know, for the life and to find the find the fish, and then recommended a bunch of lures. So it's great combo. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to learning quite a bit from this one. I think we're giving away a couple of madmans for this time, right? Yep. We're doing a quick and a cherry popper 170. Some some real popular plugs for uh, school tuna over the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get together. Let's do it. Well, I think the big difference in 2023 versus 2022 is that the fish did show up in the dump around the 20 to 30 fathom line south of the vineyard before they showed up east of Chatham or off P-Town, where last year they showed up off P-Town first. My first trip this year was in the beginning of July, first week of July, and it was a troll bite around the dump. You can drive yourself crazy going out there early because when the water looks good, it doesn't mean the fish are there. Uh, I've spent a lot of time out there in June searching around in lifeless water that looks good on a temperature chart. So you really have to rely on if you know a lobsterman or a long line fisherman that's been going out or your friends. Uh, the bluefin spread out as they usually do. So they first show up in big numbers, uh, pretty well schooled up, easy to target. You'll find whales, bait, birds, you can find the fish. Uh, the bluefin spread out into the inshore structure all the way from uh, Bacardi and Texas Tower south of New York um, up to the Ranger Wreck, Butterfish Hole, uh, all the way up to Suffolk in the northwest corner of the dump. Um, Still a troll bite at this point. Uh, hard to find the big body of sand eels without the whales around. And when the whales returned in August, it made it easier for us to focus around that inshore structure, find the bait, find the whales, jig for the bluefin. The technique for jigging really changes year to year and it also depends on the bait. If the fish are feeding on a slow moving bait, a lot of the times so a jig like the Shimano flatfall jig will work. And you can either work that up slowly, allowing it to fall about half the distance you're reeling it each time. As you lift the rod tip, you want to let it fall about halfway and reel in halfway. So instead of working the jig up like this, it's coming up, falling halfway, coming up, falling halfway. Or you can just sit there and yo-yo it right on the bottom. Uh, it was two or three years ago at the Ranger Wreck. There was almost nothing that would beat a five-inch chartreuse Shimano flatfall jig just yo-yoed right on the bottom. This past year, we were fishing with a longer, skinnier jig, and we were working them a lot quicker. There were a lot of sand eels around, so as those fish pushed the schools of sand eels around, it's a relatively quick bait compared to a butterfish or a hake, and that quick movement off the bottom is what really got bit. So as the water approached 70 degrees and some of that bluer water from the Gulf Stream came in on the eddies, we started to find a lot of dolphins feeding on faster-moving bait fish, so it's usually the Atlantic saris, or half-beaks we call them. Uh, the dolphins will be feeding on those and mackerel, chub mackerel, where they're Boston mackerel or chub mackerel up on the surface. And that's when you really want to chase the dolphin schools and start throwing poppers. Uh, you won't see the tuna on the surface a lot of the times, you'll see just dolphins, but one giveaway that the tuna are there is if you see a dolphin school moving or a dolphin pod moving with birds on top of it, if the birds are chasing the dolphins, the tuna are probably there. You know, by eight in the morning, if you hadn't found fish on top water, you'd start jigging, especially if you're marking them. Really anytime, if I'm moving around throwing poppers at whales and dolphins and I start to mark fish on the bottom or down mid-water column, I'll have someone ready to drop a jig down. And that's when it's great to have a lure like a Ron Z rigged up because not only can you cast that at fish you see on top, but you can also drop it straight down. So the bluefin really don't key in on temperature breaks the way the yellowfin do. You can find bluefin and yellowfin feeding in green water that's in that 65 to 75 degree range on the inshore humps. Uh, 20 to 25 fathoms a lot of times. Um, if you're looking exclusively for yellowfin, sometimes the best thing to do is go towards the bluest water you can find. So anywhere north of the shipping lanes, you see really blue water, especially around some structure, uh, is gonna be productive. The end of August, early September, when we had the, the hake bite that came up on the, in the dump, and that was just running around using our bird radar, chasing small groups of birds on top of feeding fish. And that's when we were really putting up uh, big numbers, 15, 20 fish a trip on poppers. So later in the season when we were fishing um, inshore areas closer to Block Island, you could be out there at daybreak and you really wouldn't mark fish 
closer to the surface than about 100, 120 feet. We were fishing 150 to 180 feet of water and they just really weren't coming up off the bottom. And you could throw a popper all day when the fish are down 120 feet and they're not gonna come up and eat it. So what a lot of people were doing is they would start out jigging and then uh, as the season progressed, people realized, hey, if I go out there with a few flats of, flats of butterfish, I can turn a two bite day into a 10 bite day. So we would start chumming and chunking with those frozen butterfish. If you're chumming with butterfish, you have to try and pay attention to the angle in which they're sinking. So you're throwing a butterfish chunk out and you're cutting a single butterfish into maybe four or five pieces. I'll throw a chunk out and I'll let it sink down five or six feet and I'll throw another chunk out. So the idea is to get those fish coming up in the chum from where you're marking them at 100, 120 feet down, they're gonna slowly lift up chasing those pieces of chum. So if you are gonna drop a piece down with a weight, like on a tip rod, it's not gonna be super effective because your chunks are gonna be out going down tide and the fish aren't gonna be right under your boat looking for them at 125 feet. But if you can set your bait out under a balloon 100 yards down current at 120 feet, now you know you're in the strike zone and you're where those pieces of chum are gonna be drifting down to and you'll get bit a lot more often you can get your bait further away from the boat. The other effective method is to just free line a chunk and that's when we like to use spinning gear. So you'll try and hide your hook in a, usually a whole butterfish. I'll cut the tail off to prevent any spinning, but a whole butterfish will stand out a little bit more against those chunks. And all you do is let it float back, moving your rod to try and keep coils on the surface. Zero resistance is the key.